Today. Nice enough to join us from TNT, from Bleach Report, Chris Haynes. Chris, thanks so much for your time. We've got a little debate going here after what happened Monday in Sacramento. I know you were there. I mean, are the Pelicans right now, are they a better team than the Sacramento Kings? Ooh, well, tough question. I wouldn't go as far as say they're a better team right now, but definitely when you look at their roster, from top to bottom, they're starting to get healthy. Um you know, they're probably one of the, one of the more deeper teams we have in this league. Uh, but I can't I can't give them that title right now. Do they have a potential to be? Yes, most definitely. But, uh, you know, the thing with them has been health, you know, for the last three or four years. And it starts with Zion Williamson. And, um, you know, they got Trey Murphy back. They got C.J. McCollum back. Zion is in there. So, um, you know, we'll see where they go from here. But as of right now, I, I, I would still lean towards Sacramento. Chris Haynes joining us uh, was on the broadcast the other night, TNT. Chris, here we are 19 games into the season for Sacramento. They have a better record this year, but the angst around the franchise and around the fan base seems to be much different. It, it seems, you know, the expectations obviously have been raised. Where do you think the Kings fit in in the Western Conference right now? Yeah, I think I think you hit it right there. It's definitely because of expectations based off what they did last year, and you know we're we're thinking that they could potentially take that next step this season. But um, you know, in, in the scheme of things, like they're they're a dangerous team. You know, they, you know, I, I know for for a fact that they're one of the teams in the Western Conference that you know if they make the postseason, you know, you don't want to face them. You know, they're young. Um, they're, they're not afraid of anybody. Um, they can play fast. Um, they can go, you know, in the, into the half court game and have some bonus picky apart. So there's a multitude of weapons that they can go by and, and try to beat you in different ways. And so, uh, but there is that thing that's, you know, expectation that that is real, that is serious. And so when you're not sneaking up on anybody anymore, uh, things tend to change and, you know, their record, what are they six in the standings right now? Yeah, yeah, I believe they are. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, that's 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 solid. This is the fifth, Western actually. Conference. Yeah, no. Yeah, fifth, fifth actually. Yep. Okay. Fifth. I mean, it's the Western Conference. Is, you know, they're fifth, and so that's that's nothing to sneeze about. But definitely, I mean, I, I think you have to relish taking baby steps. Um, are they a championship contending team right now? Ah, you know, I, you know, I that that would be tough for me to to give them that, that title right now. But I, I think, you know, when you're looking at progression, I think they're doing that. And uh, I think they're doing it well. You're looking at De'Aaron Fox taking a step uh, forward, not on, not just on the court, but leadership. I was talking to people that they're t- talking about he's leading huddles. And I've heard, you know, being a solid reporter this season, I've, I've heard him be a little bit more vocal in timeout huddles and directing guys and encouraging guys. And so, you know, you're seeing that Malik Monk is playing tremendous off the bench, and uh, you know, look, it's it's it's, it's about progression. You don't want to be stagnant, and I wouldn't I wouldn't call the the Kings stagnant by any stretch. Chris Haynes with us from Bleach Report and TNT. Speaking of De'Aaron Fox, Chris, you of course uh, reporting that the Kings offered De'Aaron Fox two years, 105 million dollar extension before the start of the season, uh, and he declined the offer. What what does that mean for De'Aaron Fox and for the Kings going forward? Yeah, they they want to they want to work something out where it's it's going to be a long term pack. Um, De'Aaron Fox wants to be here in Sacramento, and the Kings want their cornerstone player in return. But but financially, uh, from a financial standpoint, it, it made sense for De'Aaron to decline. Uh, he if he can make All NBA team along with Defensive Player of the Year or even MVP, he will be in line for the Supermax deal next summer and. If that were to happen, the earliest he could sign that deal would be July 8th of 2024. Mm-hmm. And as of right now, that that would look some, somewhere around four years, $255 million, somewhere along those lines. And so the Kings understood, like, they, they knew, you know, they, they knew what, what De'Aaron and his camp uh, would do. Uh, but that that's just a deal you got to make um, um, to De'Aaron. You know, it's, it's similar – pretty similar to Giannis. Giannis at, at first, you know, he was telling everybody that he was going to wait until next summer to, to sign a long-term deal. Then he ended up taking, I can't remember, but it, you know, people kind of 
were stunned that he that he took the I think it was a two or three year extension he signed um, last month or right before the season started. And so, uh, you know, you, 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 as a team, that's what you do. You do your due diligence. But, you know, they, De'Aaron, uh, along with his, his agent, Rich Paul, CEO of Clutch Sports, you know, they're all in the same wavelength with the Sacramento Kings. So there's no drama to unfold. But mm-hmm. I, I knew that was something that was never reported uh, about that extension being offered. Good stuff right there from Chris mm-hmm. Haynes. Chris, still a couple of months away uh, from the trade deadline, and, and Kings fans, obviously, they're looking at ways they can improve the roster, upgrade some of the names. We're hearing OG Ananobi, uh, Pascal Siakam, even a Zach Levine out there, maybe a Caruso. What are you hearing on the trade front around the league about some of those names I just mentioned? Yeah, I mean, those names have been linked to Sacramento for a while. OG Ananobi, um, Zach Levine for sure has, has started up this this season. I know he he wouldn't mind if he were um, if he was shipped on the West Coast. So uh, you know those are definitely things to be in, in play. But I haven't heard anything concrete as far as anything being serious at the, at that nature at this nature um, as far as right now. I think as we progress along next couple of months, Chicago is really going to start pressing. Um, Chicago feels like they're in the driver's seat right now. They don't have to do anything urgent right now they they kind of know that they're they aren't going anywhere and so with that with that in mind you know they feel like they can you know hold on and uh, continue forward with that trade deadline you know being a few months away so uh yeah i think you know things will definitely heat up but yeah i mean when you look at sacramento as far as how can they take that next step uh, you're probably looking at a wing player. And so those guys definitely fit that caliber. Uh, Chris Haynes, what do you think of uh, how the tournament's gone? How has it gone compared to what you expected? You know, I, I'm not, I'm somebody, you know, you can ask my wife. I'm somebody that's not, uh, not, you know, I, I don't embrace change. Um, I like to keep my <laughs> routine. And so, uh, you know, when they, when this idea was brought forth publicly, um, I, I wasn't for it. But I will say this, you know, I, I text Adam Silver, what was that? It was the day of the Kings-Pelicans game. And I told him, I said, man, I got to give it to you because I haven't been excited to cover a slate of games in November, in December, in like probably ever. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> just like I, I can't I can't re- recall ever feeling that way before. And, um, you know, th- th- that just hasn't been the case. And, you know, the knock on the NBA for a while has been – the NBA doesn't get serious to after the all-star break. And so I think this in season tournament has definitely helped change that narrative and it definitely got players involved. And we haven't had really any load management type situations during this in season tournament. So I, I like it. And then, you know, I'm off to Vegas tomorrow, so I'll be there for the, for the final four, but I, I, I like it. Um, the court designs, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I, could, I could take it or leave it. You know, I don't know. Like uh, some of the coaches, you know, I talked to, you know, a handful of coaches around, you know, uh, a dozen coaches throughout the league about, you know, some adjustments they will make to the end season tournament. And some are cool with the um, point differential um, mm. system. Others would like it to be like you have to win, like quarters matter winning quarters matter right. and that would be the deciding factor that way you don't have those kind of uh leaving your star players in mm-hmm. the last minutes or seconds when the game is already out of reach uh they, they feel like that would be a better way of respecting the the unspoken rules of the game but um you know there's a couple things i i personally for the NCAA tournament i personally would like for the NBA to just once the end season tournament starts, let's just stay on that for two weeks until right. the conclusion. Yeah, because absolutely. you know, as part of the broadcast, we're we're you know TNT broadcasting out ESPN for sure as well. We got to keep, um, you know, keeping the fans abreast of okay what the records are in each in the end season tournament, even though they haven't played an end season game in like four games. You know, so mm-hmm. you constantly yeah. have to mind mind people where the records stand but if you just keep it on the NCAA tournament for two weeks okay now everybody is in everybody's yep. involved and so i i would i would like that i would like to see that implemented next season chris haynes tnt bleach report thank you chris uh we appreciate your time especially on short notice uh enjoy the weekend we'll be watching and we hope to talk to you again soon appreciate you guys take care all right
Our guy, Chris Haynes. Yeah. Local guy lives out in Elk Grove. If people, people nice. didn't know. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, why are they having the games at such, well, the first game, especially at such a goofy time? Weird times, uh, right? Two yeah. o'clock Pacific, five Eastern. I, I just, you know, I know it's back to back, two games in the same building. That's the only thing I could think of yeah. is they're going to have separate admissions. So right. They separate clear admissions. And, and let me think here. So, but the second game is. At what seven? No, earlier than that. Six our time. I can't remember. I don't know if it's because separate admissions, like you said, or maybe give players time to warm up. You know, guys have their warm up two hours before the game instead of like you know in college you get half hour or whatever. That's, right. That's yeah. part of a tournament. Yeah, it's yeah. like all right, the game's <laughs> over. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Let's start the next one. Right. Yeah. It's it's weird, man. Two o'clock tomorrow we'll be watching basketball. Yeah, I agree with Chris about. One way to improve the tournament. I think you mentioned this. Yeah. Um, when you have the period where the, this is an in season tournament game, but your next game's not, your next game's not, yeah. and then you have another one. Right. It right. just uh, it unnecessarily confuses it a little bit. It, it it really does. And you know, from a player standpoint, you, you're emotional. You get high and you get low. It's just sort of like a roller coaster thing. Uh, and, and also, you're telling fans this game means more, but tomorrow's game doesn't mean as right. much. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so since they're out, the Kings will play the Phoenix Suns on Friday. When we come back, uh, Kings uh, broadcaster and original Sacramento Kings, yes. the great Eddie Johnson, joins us. Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports.